Hey guys, uh, today we are going to be, or I'm going to be showing you how to create events in Alice 2 as well as in Alice 3.1. We're going to be doing two quick videos. The first will be how to do events in Alice 2.2, and the second will be how to be how to do events in Alice 3.1. And um, they're different enough where it's going to require two two quick tutorials. Uh, first, a little bit about events. Events basically allow you to, or allow the user to control uh, certain aspects of what's going on in the uh, inside your program while you're running it. So instead of it just being a video, you can actually include like keyboard input, like you are the one controlling where the character goes, or um, you're the one who's who's telling the car to to keep moving, to to speed up, or uh, you're the one like clicking the button that that rolls the dice or that it basically allows for user interactivity so I'm gonna switch over to Alice 2 and we're gonna just get started so I have this scene set up and I've got my uh, my ground and my character and what I want to do what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to control the bore using the arrow keys like have him move forward backwards and then turn left and right so the first thing that we do when we want to start creating uh, uh, interactivity is we go to the events area and that's this this area right here in Alice 2 it's, it's different in Alice 3 so we go to create new event and then we go well, because I want to use the, the arrow keys I'm going to go to the second one this when a key is type and I'll click on that and I'll choose the up arrow and uh, really fast notice how there's these nifty arrow signs this is for Mac because I'm running a Mac. If you're on a PC, it'll look slightly different. I think there's a third, you know, so this is like a drop down menu or pop out menu. I think there's a third pop out menu for the arrow keys if you're on a PC. So it'll be slightly different, but easy enough for, for you guys to figure out. So what I've just said is when the up arrow key is typed, I want it to do nothing. So I have to change this to bore move forward. But when I click on it to choose like a move forward because the bore has like move methods, it doesn't actually allow me to do that. It only allows me to see the methods that have been created. Right now that's just the, the initial my first method. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a move method for the bore that um, says move forward. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to choose, I'm going to click on the bore and when I do that, the bore's details open up here, the, the properties, methods, and functions for the bore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method called move forward for the bore. So I've created this new method, it's right here, and it opens it up here uh, for editing. So I want it to move forward, so I'm going to drag this, this default method called move, drop it in here, and choose the forward direction and I've already set a default from, from earlier just testing those out. I'm going to set it for three meters. So now I've got this this method and what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it up here. So I click on that nothing again and notice that the bore has now popped up and I can choose the move forward. So now I've linked whenever I press the up arrow key move forward the method is called and that'll run this this move forward three meters so I'm gonna really fast create three more events that link the other arrow keys to other methods so I'm gonna click key is typed key is typed key is typed do that three times and then I'm just gonna choose the other directions the down arrow the left arrow and the right arrow and then because I've created these three uh, events I need to create three methods because right now all I have is the move forward and I don't want the I don't want the board to keep moving forward no matter what arrow key I type. So I'm going to go here and create a back uh, left and right methods so that I can uh, choose those guys. So we've got back left and right and I'm going to click on the back and tell it to move backwards by three meters, click on left, tell it to turn, because I want it to do like a, a revolution, turn left by a quarter meter, and then on the right, 
I'm going to tell it to turn uh, right by a quarter of, of, a, of a revolution. And so I've got these three methods now. I can link them to the arrow keys in these events that I've created. So I'll click on this and say bore uh, back for the down arrow key and then bore left for the left arrow key and bore right for the right arrow key. And that says when I press this key, do this. When I press this key, do this. And the same for the other two. So now when I click the play button, you can see that as I start hitting the arrow keys, I go forward, it goes forward, I click left, it goes, oh, technically the, the arrow keys did go left because it's actually the bores left. So if I click left now, you can see that it turns left. If I go right, it goes right. Uh, the problem at the beginning was that the bore was actually facing us. So when I clicked left, it, in our perspective, he went right, but that's because it's based off of his perspective. And I go forward, backwards. So it's all working, and that's pretty much how you create user move, user controlled uh, characters in the Alice environment. And what's cool is uh, if you're using Alice 2, I'd suggest that you just click on this create new event and kind of look at some of your other options like clicking a mouse, doing something. Um, while something is true, you can use if else and while statements in there. and uh, Just have a lot of fun when a variable changes. Like seriously, there's so many options in here of just cool, cool ideas you can come based off of these. Like let the mouse orient the camera, let the mouse move the camera. Uh, if you want to do like a first person type of game and yeah there's just a whole bunch of options so that's pretty much how you do events in Alice 2, Alice 2.2 and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video so it's not too long but I'm going to right away jump into the next video of how to do events in Alice 3 slash 3.1 uh, mainly just 3.1 because that seems like it's the, the newer one that they're the newer interface that they're switching to. So yeah, I'm going to stop the video now.